Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, today I'm going to be starting the Locks and Keys series. So I, you know, I've talked about Locks and Keys before. This is as much for my personal interest as I hope yours. Uh, I'm going to be actually looking at pretty in-depth, deeper than I've looked before into each of them. So for that reason, I'm just going to focus on one lock each time. Uh, and then we're going to do the current key to that lock and then what the key changes. So what this means is there are eight perennial locks. We call them locks. These are the things that never change. The lock names are the nature, the example, the temple, um, the leader, the pattern, the plan, the way, and the witness. And so these are the kind of keynotes that Ra has given to the eight gates of the G Center. And today we're going to be looking at 25, at the way. And um, the way, this is the way of being. This is the way, this is the mystical way. I mean, it's part of the mystical way. It's the gatekeeper for the mystical way. This is the religious propaganda of a time. Um, if you look at Wa, the 25 is the priest or priestess. So. This is going to be what the way of an era is. They're going to tell you, this is the way you live. This is the way to do your life. This is the way that you, this is the way. This is the way it is, right? Just the way. And so what we can see is for gate 25, for the lock of gate 25, the key from 1615 to 2026 has been gate 37, the gate of the family. This is part, this is, the family has been the way, simple enough. And that's changing to gate 55. The spirit will be the way. And that's in 2027. And I, I like this. I mean, 25 and 55 are like two of the spirit-related gates, two of the most spirit-related gates. And spirit in the sense of the eternal personality crystal and transpersonal karmic connection. And spirit also in the case of the enthusiasm or in the sense of, rather, enthusiasm and being spirited and kind of when you see that spirit shine through in a person and you, you kind of see their spirit. And uh, yeah, and so I really like that, that this change I like, you know, we'll see when we get to like behavior, which has been in gate nine, you know, gate nine has been the key to lock 10, which is the lock of behavior. Gate nine is the gate of focus. The behavior during this time has been saying to focus, that's changing to gate 34. The new behavior is going to say, show your strength. I don't like that one as much, but I do like the move <laughs> from the 37 to the 55. This is what Deleuze calls the move to a post-filial or a-filial society. Filiation, filial means family, right? So if you look up the French philosopher Gilles Deleuze, G-I-L-L-E-S-D-E-L-E-U-Z-E, -E Gilles Deleuze, he, he talks about, and this, I guess, is in um, A Thousand Plateaus, which he co-wrote with Felix Guattari, about an afilial society, a non-filial society, a, a non-family-oriented society. And as much as we love the family and we love the affection and all of us born during this time have it programmed in our DNA that this is the way. The way is to start a family. The way is to have a family. You don't want to be old and alone. You don't want to die alone without a family, right? That's kind of the, you know, propaganda. Um, so this is the way. You have to make a family. But despite that, and despite all of our love for families, there is something exciting about moving to this afilial place. Okay, so what I'm going to do also in these is I'm just going to be reading from the Rave I Ching line companion. And I'm going to read uh, the first line of the key that's going away, because all of the keys right now are first line. They've all been first line since 1960, 61 in there. Before that, they were second lines. Before that, they were third lines. It's all retrograde, right? The entire thing moves retrograde. So when we're working with global cycles and with this wobble of the earth, what it is is that there's two wheels. There's the sidereal wheel, just like people who talk about sidereal human design or sidereal astrology. Unfortunately, nobody has yet engaged with sidereal human design with the astuteness and diligence that they engage with sidereal astrology. So for instance, Richard Mason is a real charlatan and, and lies a lot where he pretends that he's using true sidereal astrology calculations and so on, but he's not. He's using an arbitrary fixed, you know, he's not. If you ask people who follow true sidereal human design, if it represents the sky better because it has 
different um, sizes for the different signs, they'll say yes. And that's true of true sidereal astrology. You know, in true sidereal astrology, one sign is seven degrees and another is 30s. You know, Scorpio is tiny and Virgo is huge and all this stuff. One is 42 degrees, one is only seven. And instead of the fixed uniform 30 degree divisions. But that's not what Richard Mason's doing. So unfortunately, nobody has really applied sidereal understanding to human design yet. The only real example we have of that, or I guess two examples, true sidereal and then genetic matrix, neither of those do a very good job. Genetic matrix at least gives you enough rope to hang yourself. They at least give you a bunch of different sidereal, or at least for a time they were giving you, you could choose the, um, the offset, which was kind of cool. I don't know if it's still like that. I don't use that site because of other issues related to time zones. In any case, uh, you know, this is sidereal human design. When we are doing global cycle analysis, what we are doing is we are analyzing how the tropical wheel is superimposed over the sidereal wheel and how they move against each other at around 72 years per degree. And that's what I mean when I say that there's a retrograde movement of the sidereal wheel against the tropical wheel, and this is what causes the locks and keys phenomena. So right now, all of the keys are first line. Every single key is the first line. So we have the keys, um, we have the keys of the gate of Maya and the gate of uh, Sleeping Phoenix. Something else people don't realize, sorry, um, cross the planning, moving into Sleeping Phoenix and penetration. Something else people don't often realize is that there's an externalization and an internalization theme. An internalization theme as well. And so that's actually moving from Maya to penetration just as externalization moves from um, from planning to the sleeping phoenix, right? So we, we have these two movements at once. You know, I'll be going into this more as we go on, but for today, and I think for each of these, I'm gonna kind of aim to just do one, one lock and talk about its previous key and talk about its next key. Or I mean, its previous slash current key. This is, I mean, if you're watching this before 2027, if you're watching it after February 15th, 2027, then the key that I'm calling the next key will be the key that, that you're familiar with. You'll be recognizing it uh, in your time. So each of the keys is in the first line. And, and as I mentioned earlier, key 37 to lock uh, 25 is, so that's also in the first line, right? And it's gonna be moving into key 55, into gate 55, which will be the key um, post 2027. That's gonna be the sixth line. So it's already something interesting we can see. It's, as we move, normally the, the lines tell a story, and the first line tells you the story of getting to the bottom of it. So if you're a first line personality, you're spending your whole life getting to the bottom of what is this thing really all about. If you're in, you know, um, 37 and you have the first line there, then you're gonna be, what does it really mean to have a solid family? What does it really mean to have affection. What does, what does 37 really mean? You know, what bargains work and which ones don't? And you'll be getting that solid foundation. And as you progress in the second line and the third line and so on, they add to different stories until it gets to the sixth line. At the very end, after it sort of has its final hurrah of the fifth line, which is also how it represents itself to the world. You know, the fifth line of gate 37 is going to be the ideal family, what the world wishes their family were like what the world hopes their family is like, and so on. Uh, the hopes and dreams of the world exemplified through the fifth line. But then it moves into the sixth line and then we get transition. And the transition prepares us for the next gate. And so the sixth line often kind of has one foot in the next gate already and it actually has one foot in the entire circuitry, so to speak. If the fifth line is looking across the channel, the sixth line is looking at the whole circuitry, at least from the roof phase on. So this is the normal way of things. We start at the first line, we get this solid foundation. The first line process is this process by which we get to the bottom and we reveal what it's really all about. Once we learn what it's all about, then we move to the second line and we say, well, how do we put this into practice? Then we move to the third line and say, well, let's test it out. Then we move to the fourth line, how do we get other people on board? Then we move to the fifth line, how do we universalize this? And then we get to the sixth line and we're kind of bored of it and we go to the next. Um, I often use uh, some of the examples from um, Simon Jerjavchik, the, uh, the uh, manifester um, who's very active on the Human Design Catalyst group. If you're on Facebook, please, please join that group. It's a, it's a very active, fun group. And anyway, he's the one who first pointed out to my awareness that you can just read the first and sixth lines and get a really nice story. 
you get a really nice story of the wheel. Here, let me uh, let me pull up the wheel here. Let's see, Rave Mandala. And so I, I usually start in the same place. Maybe I'll try my hand somewhere else, but uh, I'll tell you where I usually start just because it's the one that I've kind of practiced or the one that he told me about, rather. Oh yeah, this is perfect. So you're in gate 20, and the first line of gate 20 is what does it really mean to be in the moment and to be aware? 20 is the buzz of insect consciousness, you know. And then you get to the, to the sixth line, and it's kind of like, there's got to be something more. We don't just want to be in the moment. We're not insects, you know. We're not just, you know, Eckhart Tolle tells us, it's like Eckhart Tolle's book is perfect if you're an insect. Like, just buzz, buzz, buzz in the moment. That's all insects have is the moment. Or it's kind of like the joke about the, the fish, the goldfish, and it goes, oh, that's a nice castle. Oh, that's a nice castle. Oh, that's a pretty castle. Like, it doesn't have memory, so every time it turns to look at the castle. Or the Ralph Waldo Emerson quote, the only thoughts of turtle are turtle. You know, the only thoughts of turtle are turtle. Everywhere the turtle goes, it goes, turtle, 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 turtle. And this is what the 20 is kind of like. So you get to the sixth line, and then you see that that leads into gate 16. And it says, well, it's got to be something else. It's got to be something else. So then 16 says, okay, well, there's skill. There's practice. We don't just have to be in the moment. We actually can kind of reference. We can do the same thing every day. And every day we get a little bit better at it. And every day we learn a little bit more. We get a little faster. We make a few less mistakes. And we do, and so on. And it gets smoother and, and all this stuff. So then you get to the 16-1, it's like, what is it really all about to have skill? And they spend their whole lives learning what it really means, getting to the bottom, getting to the revelation of what skill is all about. And then by the time you get to the sixth line, they say, okay, but I've been in the workshop my whole life. I've been in the lab. I've been doing it theoretically. It's like uh, if you've seen that movie Old Boy, uh, not, not very mild spoiler for the first five minutes of it. Please skip ahead 30 seconds if you don't want to hear. But the premise is that he's been locked up for like 15 years. And during that time, he's learning martial arts on his own and he gets out and then these street thugs try to mess with old boy, with the main guy, and then there's a voiceover and he goes, and I'm talking about the, um, you gotta watch the Korean one. I, I wasn't a fan, I turned off the, the Spike Lee one. Unfortunately, usually I'm a fan of his, but anyway, it's, and it's very dark and graphic and so, you know, be, where, be warned. But anyway, he, he gets out and he has 15 years. He's never been in a fight before his life, you know, before getting locked up. Then he gets out and he goes, I wondered if 15 years of theory could be put into practice. And then one of them takes a punch and then he beats them all up and then he goes, you know, it turns out it could. You know, and so that's what the 16 is like. They've had 15 years practicing. They've never been in a fight. You know, they've had 15 years playing piano. They've never played on stage. They've had, you know, it's practice, 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 practice. And that, not to say this in, in, if you have 16, that that's true for you. I'm just saying this is the sort of archetype of the 16. It's the archetype of rehearsal, of planning, of practice. Well, what happens when you get to the sixth line of gate 16? They're done with it. They're tired of it. They go, okay, well, I'm done with all this practice. What's next? Oh, gate 35, experience. Experience, it's different, right? I can get experience. I don't have to just practice. I can go out there and see what it's like. I can go on tour. I've played with a pristine sound system and great headphones. What's it like playing on a terrible sound system with people screaming and pouring their beer on me, you know, as a musician or something, right? Going out into the world. So then 35-1, what does it mean to have a good, and they, they really quickly learn, the first line of 35 learns, hey, you know, there's not all experiences are equal. Some are good and some are bad. And by the time they get to the sixth line, it's all about, I don't want to have the bad experiences anymore. I want to have the good experiences. And yeah, I can go out there and I can go backpacking and I can have this experience. But you know what? It makes a really big difference. One thing, one thing. You know what makes the biggest difference with experience? Yeah, it's money. It's money. And that's why the next gate is gate 45, the gate of money, part of the money line, right? So by the time you get to the, to the 35, 6, they go, I don't really, I don't want to just have any experience. I want a good experience. I'm going to need some money. So they get to the 45. And by the time they get to the end of that, it's not all about money anymore. It's about something else that's more important than money. And the next one is gate 12. You can keynote that yourself and so on. And it just keeps going. So this is the normal way of things. And we're so accustomed to first line, towards the sixth line, then transition. And we get to the transition at the end. We have the revelation of what it's all about at the beginning, then we work towards bringing it out to the world by the fifth line, then we have the transition to get to the next one. With the global cycles, this is exactly opposite. You get the revelation at the end. You know, we started the cross of planning in 1615. 
And you think about what the cross of planning is about. It's a cross that has the 3740 in it. So if any cross has a channel, that automatically becomes the most important factor. Not that the other gates don't play a part, but that channel becomes a dominant factor. So you already have this 3740. What have we gotten since then? Well, it's not like we got it all given to us in 1615. 1615 began with a time of tremendous transition and change. Then it entered into fifth line, which in this keynoting can even be a kind of a crisis. And then fourth line, the consolidation and creation of the status quo. Then the third line, the experimentation and the kind of scientific free thinking. You know, we can see that the sort of scientific revolutions really taking off during the third line phase in the 1800s. And then we have um, the second line, and we have this time, you know, through the second line keys, and then we get to the first line keys in 1960, 1961, and there, and getting to the first line keys is where it's all revealed. This is where we actually get to find out what it's all about. We actually get to have everything given to us. You know, each of these keys, we'll see the first line is kind of like, like, uh, 611, occult knowledge. You get all the occult knowledge given to you. It wasn't given to the people in 1615. It's not like 1615 hit and they all got the occult knowledge, but 1961 hit and everyone got occult knowledge. And of course we were preparing for it since spiritualism movements in the 1850s and so on, and even before that in the 1800s, you know, early 1800s, and even, I mean, there were so many different times throughout this. So it's not that the first line is the only time that will have revelation, but that the first line is kind of like, you get it at the end of the cycle, at the end of each section. And then what we're going into is a time of transition. This is not yet the time of transition. This is the time of decadence. This is the time of all information being given freely. This is the information of infinite access to everything, of all the veils being lifted. You know, we're not yet into the time of the transition. That starts in 2027 and goes for you know another 70 years after that. So brace yourself for the time of transition because that's about to begin in a few years, or maybe it's already begun, depending when you watch this video. But at the time of recording, uh, you know, it's six years out. Five years out now, actually, five years. It's 2022. So, okay, so now let's do a little bit of our analysis. Let's see, I can't know. Out of coffee, but it's okay. Um, so, we're going to look at what we're moving out of. And we're moving out of the family. The family, and this is from the Ravi Ching Line Companion. I'll just be kind of just reading little excerpts as we go. The 37th hexagram is about community, a deeply social channel, the design of a part seeking the whole. Oh yeah, I often uh, use the example of my acquaintance who has this channel who wants to go into the film industry because there's this wanting to be part of something bigger than you, wanting to be part of a big family. Uh, the stream is about sensitivity, it's about touch, the 37th gate is the gate of friendship and family, affection, touching, and hugging at a price, because in the tribe, there's always a bargain. So I'm just going to pause here for a moment to just point out, during this 3740 time, we've got the 9 to 5 work week, we've gotten so many bargains, right? The bargain between your aloneness versus the time you have to spend with others, the 40 versus the 37. 40 is the gate of aloneness. And so during this time, it's been so many negotiations and changes of what that bargain would be and what is fair. Fairness is a tribal keynote. And, you know, this this is also a prove it to me channel. This is saying like, like that's why it's, it's funny. I like the touching and hugging comes at a price because in the tribe, there's always a bargain. Well, yeah, there's also always going to need to be proof required. Prove it that you're loyal. Prove it that it's a good bargain. Prove everything. And if you think about the prove it at a larger level, this is one of the things that the defined ego of the area is demanding. You know, this era, of the era, rather, not area, sorry, of the era, of the 1615 to 2026 era, what we saw was a development of ego demands to prove it. The Protestant demand that says, I don't, you know, prove it to me. I don't want to take your word for it. I'm not going to take your word for what God says. I'm going to have a direct commune. And the same with um, science, which is all about, it's premised on the idea, I'm not going to take your word for that, that you got the results. I'm going to test the results too and see if I get the same results. And if I get the same ones, and if they get the same ones, and if everyone gets the same results or within a margin of error, then we can accept it as proof. But you have to prove it to me. So, yeah, I mean, it's, um, 
it's, it's just to realize in the larger context what 37 is also about here, that part of the way has been the way of proof and the way of fairness and the way of a good bargain and all of these tribal things have been part of the way. Ra continues, here in gate 37, we have the possibility of who will or will not provide what is needed. The energy in the wave, the potential to recognize who will provide and who won't, it's recognition. So it's recognizing the 40 across the channel also. It's recognizing who's a good 40 and who's a bad 40. Who's a 40 that has the capacity and who doesn't. What's a good bargain, what's a bad bargain. What's fair and what's unfair. What's reasonable and what's unreasonable. So this is the, the potential to recognize who will provide and who won't. There's always a price. The 37 needs the power of the ego and is always looking for it. The possibility here is the sense of touch in the mouth. I guess because it's also related to the stomach and the link between the mouth and the stomach. So Ra continues to say that he has the 40, and he's met a lot of 37s in his life. They love to hug and kiss him. It's in their nature. The 40 is the stomach, and the mouth is at the other end. And the mouth is always saying, your stomach is always full, so fill mine. The deepest relationship between 37 and 40 has to do with resources. The whole stream has to do with resources. The 37-1 is the line of the mother slash father. Please remember that the 55-6 the line in the 55 that awakens the spirit, its next step is to the 37-1. So he's talking about conventionally, after the spirit's awakened, you move on to the 37-1. Well, we're going the opposite direction at a global level, right? The way has been the 37-1 since, you know, it's funny, reparenting has been one of the big things since the 1970s, and that really kicked off, right, when the, the key became the mother slash father. But... That is the transition this line is looking for. The, the first thing about mutation is in the, in the in, sorry, ah. the first thing about mutation in the individual, in terms of the spirit, is that the first place it has to go is directly into the tribe, into the line of the mother slash father, as a mutation into the family, into the tribe itself. So this would this is interesting when you get into uh, the mystical way. You see that there is the 1949, then there's the 3740 that are, are tribal, then it changes to individual, leaving behind the tribe, going into the 5125, and then finally to the 1020. So the mystical way is kind of interesting as it moves its way up from the root to the solar plexus to ego to G to the throat. And we can see it leave behind the tribe, but as Ra often is, he's absolutely correct here that the mutation does go, that the, the mystical does go through. Um, and I'm not trying to equate the mystical and the mutative but it's, if we look at mysticism as related to individual circuitry, a mutation related to individual circuitry, you can see where I'm going with that. All right. A position of inherent respect that ensures a focus for the development of guidelines. So this has been the way since 1961, 60, 61. I wish I had the exact date handy. Sorry, I don't. But um, early 60s, we switched. And, you know, it's not like these, even if it changes on a dime, at some point, it really does take three and a half years probably for people to start. Like, it's going to be like... 2030, it's going to be summer of 2030 that we're three and a half years into 2027, you can notice it a lot more, of course. And same, it's going to be like the mid-60s that you really start to notice uh, the change. And seven years is when it's fully moved into it. So, but this has been the way since the early 60s. A position of inherent respect that ensures a focus for the development of guidelines. I mean, just think about how heavy that conditioning is. The conditioning to be in a position of respect. Venus exalted. Harmony is the key to the successful maintenance of relationships. It's only through harmony that the beauty and values of the family can endure. It's a foundation line and there is no polarity. It's very straightforward. This is what the family is all about. So there is no detriment. It's really just normal or exalt. So this is great. So really there's no polarity. Maybe this is what it always comes out. Harmony. So we have to have harmony because then we can have beauty and values of the family that can endure. So this has been, so harmony has been the kind of message of the day since the 60s. Harmony between genders, harmony between races, harmony between everyone, harmony of all kinds. Ra continues, in the book of letters, this is friendship that is rooted in sensitivity and ensures harmony. So sorry, everybody, we're losing the friendship, we're losing the sensitivity, and we're losing the harmony. It has to be rooted in the sensitivity to the legitimate bargain and the touch. I make fun of the bargain, Ross says, he makes fun of the bargain, but please understand that it's natural. 
The thing is, it has to be a clean bargain. All clean bargains are of value. The whole thing with the beginning of this process is to recognize the first thing that the spirit mutation will do is that it has to go to the mother and father and be instilled as a value within the family as a guideline. What friendship is all about is that everything having to do with friendship has to do with sensitivity. And sensitivity is a word that simply says resources. The selfishness in the 55-6 leads to the family and the resources. So it's interesting, he's talking about the move from the 55-6, which as we'll see in a moment, is selfishness, into the family. Well, we're going the opposite direction. We're going the opposite way. Hexagram 55, this will be the new key, right? This is the uh, Cross of the Sleeping Phoenix key. Hexagram 55, abundance. This hexagram is of enormous importance to humanity. This 55th gate in the channel of emoting, the design of moodiness, it's in the 55-6 that the nature of emotional spirit will begin to awaken as a genetic evolutionary pattern. Yeah, this is, this is you know, we're moving into this time. And so the nature of the 55th hexagram is important to us at that level. On the mundane plane, it's the most unstable of all the emotional gates, the most volatile. It has the highest wave going up and the lowest wave going down. Though it represents a mystery, Ra calls it the sleeping phoenix that will awaken and bring with it the fire of the Aquarian age. The reality is that it represents now this enormous instability in the movement of the wave. The glass that is always half full and half empty going through its wave process. Yeah, so it's, you know, this is what it's about of going between, I know I'm in love, I know I'm not in love, I don't know if I'm in love, I don't know if I'm not in love. I know it's good, I know it's not good. I don't know, it might be good. I, I don't know, it might be bad. You know, and it's moving between these different variations. It's moving between, I know I'm happy, I don't know if I'm happy. I don't know if I'm not happy. I know I'm not happy. <laughs> and, you know. Um, yeah, and so the nature of the 55th gate, the gate of the spirit. The potential is the awareness of provocation or not. Am I being provoked or not? Do I like it? The awareness potential is the mood to eat. This is one of the things to recognize by the nature of the 55th gate. Anytime you see someone who has this gate, please understand how important it is to tell them, do not eat if you're not in the mood. It's so important for them so they can... That because they can become unhealthy, right? Uh, <laughs> if you have the whole channel defined and you're always in the mood for eating, then it's there already. If that energy gets to the sacral of the throat, then there's the burning of the energy. If you're not connected to the sacral of the throat, there's no way to burn that energy. The 55th gate can only eat, make love, or work when it's in the mood. Only in the mood can it be social. Unless people with the 55th gate understand and honor it, they're going to suffer terribly. So the mood becomes the essence of all this. Well, that's true. I have gate 12. That's true for 1222. I mean, this is a very, it's, it's important. And if you have 1222 as a harmonic or as, as an electromagnetic with somebody, then, you know, ask them, hey, are you really in the mood to hang out today? Because if they're not in the mood and you're not in the mood, it's not going to go well. Uh, Ra says he doesn't have any emotional definition in individuality, but he does have the 12th gate, and he is very individual and deeply moody. Now, every time he steps into the emotional wave, moods are something that are very natural to him. It's simply the reality of what it is to be individual. And it can be pinpointed or highlighted in the 55th gate. Okay, so we start in 55.1. That's, okay, that is actually going to be like 600 years from now. I'm going to skip forward. Let me get to 55.6. Yeah, it's interesting to see where we're headed. If you read through these... 55-1's cooperation. How funny if that was actually what we're going into. No, that's like, we're going into that, you know, in, uh, we're going into that in 2400, you know, AD, right? That's when we'll actually be able to cooperate. Abundance is strictly the question of spirit. But let's just go into 55-6. That's what we're moving into in 2027. We already get glimpses of it. And this is selfishness, the line of selfishness. We come to the sixth line into the transition point, the place where the, muta the mutation will take place that will begin the process of spirit awareness. In terms of resonance, you can see the third and the sixth line both have Saturn exalted. I'll scroll up for a second to the third line. The third line is innocence. Hmm. Yeah, which is a reference to the, fifth, to the 25th hexagram. Interesting. That'll be interesting when we get to the 55-3, a couple hundred years from now, when that's the key when innocence is the key to the lock, gate 25, which also has the keynote innocence. Really nice kind of, uh, you know, continuity there. So 55-6, selfishness. And we see the resonance from the third and sixth line. They both have Saturn exalted. 
This is where the emotional spirit will awaken. we will have this process of emotional awareness that will awaken in humanity. And emotional awareness will not exist inside of us. It's something that will exist outside of us. The only way in which emotional awareness is going to be possible is when the individual integrity is complete. So that's interesting also, integrity being related to gate 25. It's one of the things to recognize that without the material requirements, the emotional system can never be sedated. When you're sitting together with people and you eat, whether it's a celebration or not, you make sure the resources are there, you fill it up. This is the nature of the materialism that lies here in the sixth line, the key to it being selfishness. But it's not the selfishness of the ego, it is the selfishness of the spirit. That's a different thing. Ra continues, selfishness is a word that people can misunderstand. It's not something that's negative. The spirit requires selfishness or there will be no transition. It is essential because it is out of the integrity of the individual that this mutation will take place. And the only way it can take place is that the individual will be able to maintain their own uniqueness because the awareness is going to exist outside of them. One has to be healthy within oneself for the awareness to exist on the outside. Such a funny idea for the awareness to exist on the outside. Yeah, very, very oblique, you know, here, what Ra is saying. I'd love to hear your comments, please, in your comments, if you have any ideas about this, viewers. Um, one has to be healthy with one, within oneself for the awareness to exist on the outside. Yeah, fascinating. From the Book of Letters, the potential of finding the spirit through materialism. When people come to me and they have this line, one of the things I tell them is work, 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 he says. It's wonderful for them. To provide for oneself is an extraordinary thing. It elevates the spirit. Ra continues, he's seen this all his life, all the hunger in the world. And he realizes the turmoil and the dilemmas of the planet, that it's recognizing that you will not get to the spirit until you can look after the body. You have no chance for the spirit unless you look after the body. Ra says he's tired of holy rollers who are full of these pious platitudes. It's not about this. It's about feeding human beings. It's about being able to look after ourselves. This is fundamental. The only way we can live properly with each other is when we learn to be able to work in the world in harmony with each other. So interesting, it is, so it is going to be about harmony. I mean, it's called selfishness, but it's not that bad. It's like, free to be you and me. Ra says he meets people all the time that they think they're ready for enlightenment, they can barely feed themselves. Give me a break, who's going to feed you? The reality is there's no spirit unless you deal with the body. All the other stuff is intellectual blah blah, white magic. Ideas can be delicious. You can believe in them, but you cannot eat them. First, you have to be able to eat. And then, I guess this is the detriment, the potential that materialism becomes obsessive with a spirit that will not share. So this is what, this is the really scary part is that we're kind of, the new way is going to be selfishness and the detriment of that is materialism becoming obsessive? Obsessive materialism. That's the era we're about to enter into. And Ross says, yes, well, what to do? Materialism can make you feel very good by going through this process and not sharing it. Well, all right. You'll get to the other side of it, too. You will get the other side of it, too. But remember something about this. All six lines look out for something very special. They're looking far beyond the nature of what is there. This is not just about the individual being able to have the right spirit to be able to communicate socially through the 1222. That's the continuation of the, the, the circuitry there. This is the spirit that recognizes that a vast mutation has to take place and is looking for that field of mutation. It's an emotional driving force in the world. This gate is about eating. The 55 is about eating. It's an emotional driving force that says, we have to have enough to eat, then we can worry about the spirit. No sense building a church until the fields have been cleared and seed have been planted. Make sure there is food first, and then you can build your church. If somebody does things only for themselves, that's what they do. Ross says he doesn't judge. Anyone who's involved in the process, this process, anybody that can maintain themselves is a lot closer to the spirit than somebody who can't, even if they are selfish. In this line, you have those who will make sure that others will benefit, and you have those that others will not benefit from. It goes to the family, to the 37-1, the line of the mother and the father. A mythology for this line is the story of King Midas. Everything that he touched turned into gold, and then he touched his food and couldn't eat it, because it turned into gold. The thing to recognize is we are not dealing with tribal circuitry. We're dealing with individual. This is the only place in the individual circuit where materialism is mentioned. Yeah, that's a really good point, you know. Food, materialism, all this is such a tribal thing only place in the individual circuit where materialism is mentioned. 
the freak and the outsider that is always looking for the collective or the tribe to take them in, this is a signal for them that they have to lead in survival. Not simply from that end, but from the emotional spirit end as well. I will just point out, I think the 214 also is about materialism. And right now, as we have uh, 14, 8 in the nodes, um, I, I have gate 2, so I'm definitely, I have my, um, I'm definitely feeling that. So, okay, well, so, you know, how do we deconstruct this? And then I'll, I'll kind of leave it for today. I would just say um, we're kind of moving from a time where the way has been family to a new time where the way is going to be the spirit. And caring for your spirit through selfishness it's interesting, there's a great quote from Rai, I wish I had it handy, but I can kind of paraphrase. He, he, he says, we put so many expectations on ourselves and on others, and when those expectations aren't met, it wounds us. And he says, unmet expectations are scars on the spirit. So I think this is a maybe a healthy sense of selfishness, is take care of your material needs without expectation. <laughs> You know, because you don't want to scar the spirit. And this is something that we're going to be, you know, the selfishness of looking after yourself materially and not putting the expectations, unhealthy expectations on yourself. The expectation that you should be happy with very little. The expectation that you should be able to get by in this way or that way. Or, you know, the expectation that you, you won't need to be selfish in certain ways. And so I think embracing what Ra calls enlightened selfishness is going to be part and parcel to survival and flourishing in this, this new era that we enter into, just as it is for anyone entering into the human design experiment. That's it for me. Thanks for today.